Hello there, my name is Richard McMunn and in this video presentation I'm going to talk to you about mechanical comprehension tests, what they are and how you can prepare effectively for them. So let's get straight into it. We need to know first of all what are mechanical comprehension tests and what are they used for? Well basically mechanical comprehension or aptitude tests as they are sometimes called have been in use for many years and they're used as a method for assessing a candidate's potential to perform a specific job. So that's why the assessor will give you the test to take because they want to see whether you have the potential to carry out this kind of job. And it's important that the job that you're being assessed for um, has a test that is relevant to the role. So for example, if you were going to carry out um, or you're applying for um, say an administration role in an office, then you're not going to have to undertake a mechanical comprehension test. So Basically, they're used in careers which require an ability to work with or understand mechanical concepts. And examples of those different kind of careers would be something like a train driver, where you have to undergo traction training, so therefore you have to understand the basic principles about mechanical comprehension. The same with driving careers, so if you were applying to become a lorry driver or a bus driver, then again, you would need to have a basic understanding of mechanical aptitude or mechanical comprehension. The same goes for armed forces. Now, many of the different armed forces will assess you in relation to mechanical comprehension, such as the Royal Air Force, um, the Royal Navy, the Royal Marines, and also Army engineering careers. Um, different civilian street engineering careers will require an ability to have mechanical understanding. The same with some of the jobs in the emergency services, and the main one is probably the firefighter. So if you want to join the fire service, you may have to undertake a mechanical comprehension test. Um, because in that kind of role you're going to have to use different kinds of complex machinery some of them which require an ability to understand hydraulics and therefore mechanical aptitude is important goes without saying that a motor mechanic will have to understand mechanical comprehension and the same with an aircraft engineer now that list is certainly not exhaustive but it just gives you a bit of a flavor for the type of um, careers that you would apply for where you'll have to carry out this kind of test. Now I want to state from the offset that you will be assessed against both speed and accuracy when you undertake a mechanical comprehension test. A lot of assessors now will deduct marks for everyone that you answer incorrectly so that basically means that any wild guessing is out of the window so you need to carry out lots of practice of mechanical comprehension tests and I'll tell you where you can do that at the end of this presentation so don't forget you're going to be going for speed and accuracy. Now a lot of the mechanical comprehension tests um, will give you a series of multiple choice options as the answers and that will generally be answer A, B, C, D and sometimes E. So four or five different options for you to choose from. So the answer is in front of you but you basically have to understand the principle. So what is important to understand? Now I'm going to talk about clockwise and anticlockwise now very briefly. Now I do apologise, most people will understand this and I don't want to insult your intelligence but it's very important that you understand the principle of clockwise and anticlockwise before you um, tackle any kind of mechanical comprehension test. Now the easiest way to remember this for those who aren't too sure about clockwise or anticlockwise is that the hands on a clock rotate clockwise okay so that's the way they go around so if you look at that one on the left that is clockwise and all you have to do if you ever forget it is just think about the hands on a clock which way do they go around and that is clockwise so obviously the other way around is anti-clockwise and these are the two phrases which are used quite frequently during mechanical comprehension tests now you may also find that some test questions which have been created in the USA refer to anti-clockwise as counterclockwise so just bear that in mind if you ever see that during a test and you know that counterclockwise is anti-clockwise okay let's try out that principle so which way will cog C rotate so that's cog C there the only clue that we've got in this question is that A is being shown as going round to the right, which as we know, because we've learnt this, that that is clockwise. So what I tend to do in this kind of question is to either use my mouse if the test is online, or use a, um, a pencil if it's a paper-based test, and I follow that round so you know that that's going clockwise. That means that B will go anti-clockwise because the way the cogs are configured, and therefore that means that C will also rotate clockwise. So the answer would be that C will rotate clockwise. So I'll just quickly go through that again. A is rotating clockwise, so you can follow with your pen or your mouse. Cog B will go anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, and C 
will therefore go clockwise and that's how you can work out which way they're going to rotate you don't have to just do it in your head you can actually use um, your mouse or a pen or pencil if it's a paper-based exercise now I want to quickly touch on mechanical advantage because again this is important to understand during many of the basic mechanical comprehension tests that you will have to undertake so if we look at these three pulley systems here you'll know that each system has got what is called supporting ropes and non-supporting ropes now supporting ropes are the ones which as the name suggests support the load only the first two pulley systems here have non-supporting ropes and I've colored these black to show that they are the supporting ropes and they support the load and you need to identify these when trying to calculate the mechanical advantage and you'll see there that I've put for you that those two first ones there are non-supporting they're not supporting the load so they're not taking any of the weight whereas these ones are so the non-supporting ropes in the first two pulley systems they basically simply change the direction of the force okay so the force is wanted to go this way on those two it's wanted to go downwards and that is wanted to pull it the other way now to calculate the mechanical advantage in a movable pulley system all we have to do is simply count the number of supporting ropes so if we try and work out the mechanical advantage in each of these three different pulley systems we can see on the left that there is one two supporting ropes and therefore that has a mechanical advantage of two if we look at the second one we'll see that the supporting ropes are there one two and three and therefore um, pulley system in the middle has a mechanical advantage of three and on the end there on the right you'll see that even though that rope there on the left is going upwards it's not changing the direction of the force so that's one two three four five so that has a mechanical advantage of five and basically the higher the mechanical advantage the easier it is to actually lift the load so hopefully that gives you a brief explanation of mechanical advantage so let's try that out so what is the mechanical advantage in this pulley system so knowing what we've learned so far there is only one supporting rope there the one on the right um, just changes the direction of the force therefore the answer is one so that is a mechanical advantage of one how about this one well you notice there that there is one two supporting ropes because that is non-supporting that just changes direction of the force and therefore the answer that that pulley system has a mechanical advantage of two okay so let's take a look at another different kind of sample mechanical test question so if you look at the diagram there you've got a ladder which is basically pitched against um, a building or a block and you see there that the height it gives us the height is 12 meters here's the question the builder is told to pitch his ladder a third of the working height so we know the working height is 12 meters away from the building below how many meters away from the building should the foot of the ladder be placed okay so that is the foot of a ladder that at the top is the head of a ladder so the foot and the head we know that the working height is 12 meters because that's where we're working to so we can then work out the ladder a third of the working height would need to be and the answer is C because 4 meters is a third of the working height is a third of 12 so that would be the answer that's what you would select let's take a look at another one so if you look at this simple beam system here you've got a weight of 50 kilograms on the left hand side you'll notice there that the fulcrum point that's the fulcrum point there with that sort of balancing point is not in the middle if it was in the middle directly so you can see it's not because you've got one meter length there and a two meter there if it was in the middle then the amount of weight that we would place on the right hand side to balance the beam would be 50 kilograms however we can't because the fulcrum point is over to the left so therefore on first looking at it you might think well we need to add more weight when in fact we don't we need to add less weight okay so we know that the difference there is one meter that's twice the, dis um, the distance two meters so therefore the weight is, ha is halved and the answer is D so 25 kilograms placed on the right hand side will balance the beam let's take a look at another one which chain so we've got chains a b and c will support the load on its own so what you have to do is imagine that each of these is not there and then place them on their own and decide whether that weight there will be supported so let's start with a if we place a on its own take off b and c the weight is going to be forcing downwards which means that that side on the left will go up that means that a is not going to support that load let's go to b so if we take off A and take off C in our minds and we're just stuck with B, the weight is forcing downwards. Therefore, the load will be supported because of the chain which is attached there will not allow that side to go any higher. Therefore, the answer to that question would be B. So if you think of C there, just to confirm, 
If we take off chains A and B and leave with C, the weight will be forcing downwards and it's not being supported, therefore it will drop down. So C is not going to support the load. And it's just a basic process of elimination, going through your mind, visualizing which one is going to work. Now let's take a look at this one. If cog A moves in a clockwise direction, there's cog A, which way will cog B turn? So let's use the principle that we've got before. So it's going in a clockwise direction, so use our mouse. That means that this one here is going to go anti-clockwise, which means that B is also going to go clockwise, and the answer is A. Okay, let's take a look at another sample mechanical test question. This is basically a pendulum system. So if you think um, of a pendulum system, it says which point will the pendulum, that's the pendulum there, will be travelling at the fastest speed. So if we were to start at A and then let the pendulum swing, it would go backwards and forwards, as you understand. So at which point would it be travelling fastest? And the answer is B, because each point A and C is going to be coming to rest. It will run out of speed and it will come back down and it will be fastest at point B. So that's the correct answer. So let's take a look at another one. And this You've got to look out for these kind of questions, guys, because this is a bit of a trick question. Which load is the heaviest? And you could be fooled for saying, well, A is the heaviest because it is the largest. But that doesn't necessarily mean it is the heaviest. And the, the trick to this question is you'll see that the fulcrum point in the middle means that the beam is balancing. Therefore, both are the same. So the answer is A. So don't get caught out with that thinking, yeah, A is the heaviest because it's the largest. It's not. The key is to look at the beam. Okay, so that's given you a little bit of a taste and a flavour of mechanical comprehension tests. Um, I've created a workbook, which is mechanical comprehension tests, and it's packed full of um, explanations and different mechanical comprehension test questions. Now, you can get this by either clicking the link just below the YouTube video, or you can go directly to careervids.com and get a copy of the book now, and you can instantly download it and start practising mechanical comprehension test questions. Now, I hope that has helped you and give you a brief explanation. And um, thank you very much for watching and I wish you all the best in your pursuit for passing your mechanical comprehension test.